All right. Uh, you listen to the African History Network show. Uh, if you're just tuning in, that was, we were just speaking with Cliff Cheeks, talking about a mayoral responsibility conference coming in, coming up in Detroit, Sunday, May 18th, at the Detroit Yacht Club. Uh, up next, we have Abiomi Ezekwe, who's the editor of the Pan African Newswire. We're going to talk about the um, Nigerian schoolgirl kidnappings. 276 uh, Nigerian schoolgirls uh, were kidnapped about almost about a month ago now by a um, uh, Islamic extremist uh, uh, organization in Nigeria. So we're going to talk about uh, what's going on with that. Uh, call in with your questions, area code 914-338-1375. 914-338-1375. The U.S. is getting involved. Is that good? Is that bad? Why couldn't the Nigerians protect, their, um, protect these girls at this school in the first place? Uh, what is, why are the Muslims and Christians fighting one another? We're going to get those questions answered by Abiyomi Ezekwe, who's the editor of the Pan-African Newswire on the other side of the break. Uh, on the other side of the break. You listen to the African History Network show, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Afro Man Episode 3 is finally here, and it's even better than Episode 1 and 2. Afro Man and the Protectors of the Book of Knowledge, Episode 3, Afro Man has decoded the secret power within math and science, and with this discovery, he delivers the Battle Gear Afro Man to fight the new villain known as Serapis. Get your copy today at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. It's item number 745. Also, you can get all three episodes of Afro Man in a bundle pack for only $25. It's item number 746, available at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Afro Man is very entertaining, but also educational because it teaches our children about their history and culture. It's for ages 5 to 10 years old. These are African American superheroes which instill self-empowerment with our children. For more information, visit AfricanHistoryNetwork.com or email us at the AHN show at gmail.com and we'll email you a PDF of our DVD catalog. Remember, right now is correct for own behavior. Be sure to visit our new website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. The long-awaited follow-up to Hidden Colors is available now at africanhistorynetwork.com. Hidden Colors 2 was the follow-up to the critically acclaimed 2011 documentary about the untold history of people of Aboriginal, Moor, and African descent. This installment of Hidden Colors goes into such topics as the global African presence, the science of melanin, the truth about the prison industrial complex, how thriving black economic communities were undermined in America, the hidden truth about Native Americans, and much, much more. Featured in this installment of Hidden Colors are Dr. Claude Anderson, author of Black Label, White Wealth, and Powernomics, Michelle Alexander, author of The New Jim Crow, Dr. Umar Johnson, nationally certified school psychologist and lecturer, Tony Browder, author of Non-Valley Contributions to Civilization, Professor Booker T. Coleman, also known as Kaba Hiawatha Kamene, legendary hip-hop artist KRS-One, Renoko Rashidi, Professor Jane Small, Dr. Phil Valentine, and Director Tariq Nasheed. Be sure to order your copy today at our new website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. It's item number 748. Remember, right now, let's correct your own behavior in Mod Hotel. The one thing that we could say about African peoples is that we left evidence of ourselves all over this planet. And that's the problem with European scientists. The deeper they dig, the blacker the planet gets. You won't find a monument anywhere prior to 1500 that is an Africoid in some way, shape, or form. People think Africa and, and Asia and uh, Guatemala, Southern America, these things were all jungle. 
jungle came after the invasions of, of European colonialism. Then the jungles came in because nobody was manning the land anymore. I'm an African American. Africa is my race. America is my geopolitical place. I'm not surrendering that to anybody. The monument that we know is Stonehenge. A European writer by the name of Gerald Massey said in one of his books that Stonehenge was built by an African man named Morian. The letter, J, let me say this again, the letter J was not invented until the 1600s. So the reality is Jesus is not the name of that person. Studies have consistently shown now for decades that people of color are no more likely to use or sell illegal drugs than whites. You're destined to be a planned minority. You know what a minority means? That means a loser. That means you're a loser. Black folk don't have a problem. White folk got a problem. Black folk problem is that white folk got a problem. The real problem we have is white supremacy. All right, welcome back to the African History Network show. On the line, we have Abiyomi Ezekwe, editor of the Pan-African Newswire. It's going to help us to uh, unravel uh, what's going on here with um, the kidnapping of these Nigerian schoolgirls? Um, okay, welcome back to the African History Network show, Abby Omi and Zikwe. How you doing tonight, brother? I'm doing just fine. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. Doing good, brother. Always good to talk to you, man. You're, you're a wealth of knowledge, and, and we need some help here with understanding this particular uh, incident right here. Uh, I don't remember anything like this, um, at least in the last few years. Do you remember anything like this in the last few years? Well, yeah, there have been, um, in civil wars, uh, for example, mm -hmm. in Sierra Leone and Liberia, uh, yeah. there was, you know, extreme abuse, you know, of women, particularly young girls, uh, by, um, you know, rebels or by soldiers. And uh, this uh, e event uh, in Nigeria is um, a culmination of a developing situation that's been going on now for almost five years uh, with um, mm -hmm. the, the government attacks on Boko Haram, uh, which uh, kind of came to a head in uh, 2009. And uh, the previous leader of the group uh, was assassinated. Uh, by the uh, Nigerian police and the military, and they went uh, to several areas in the northern part of the country uh, to uh, try to arrest the leadership. Uh, a number of their people were killed. Uh, it was an outright uh, attack on uh, Boko Haram, and then, of course, uh, they were forced underground completely. And uh, by 2010, 2011, they started to use uh, tactics uh, that, um, you know, involved high-level explosives, uh, targeting civilian populations, uh, people in Christian churches, uh, government installations. They bombed uh, United Nations uh, facilities uh, in, uh, in, in, in uh, Lagos. Yeah, so it, it, it's been an evolving situation, but I think we have to understand uh, that it involves some regional divisions in Nigeria uh, that have been there since. <laughs> the independence of the country, and okay. it's not an accident that they're based in the north of the country, uh, because there's been a power struggle as a result of the legacy of British colonialism uh, between the <clears throat> north and the south, uh, as well as the east and the west of, of Nigeria. So uh, it's all related uh, to these um, complicated issues in Nigeria, but at the same time, uh, civilians are getting caught up in this whole process. Right, right, and um, also religion is playing a role here as well. Is that correct? 
Yes. Um, however, you know, they're, Nigeria, about half the population are Muslims. Uh, mm -hmm. They're heavily concentrated in the north of the country where Boko Haram has been operating. Uh, they're largely operating in the, in the northeast. Uh, but there are many Muslims who do not support Boko Haram. Uh, mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, they have been targeting um, the Christian populations that are in the north of the country by attacking their churches, their schools. Uh, so, and it's been reported that the name Boko Haram translates into uh, Western education is bad, uh, but then some people say, no, that's not the exact translation. Uh, so, mm -hmm. the, the, but apparently <laughs> they are opposed uh, to uh, Christianity. Uh, they're opposed uh, to uh, Western educational models, which are applied uh, in um, most African countries. And in terms of what their strategic outlook is, it remains a mystery. Um, if, if they were to take power, now the question is, uh, is this what their real objectives are? Uh, I mean, what kind of society would they want to see? Um, so right. it, it raises a lot of questions. And also, it's just um, also the the style of their their, their uh, military operations have shifted over the last few years, and there have been allegations that they're connected with the uh, Al Qaeda network. And if you look uh, and look at the tactics they use, uh, for example, just since April the 14th, there have been two bombings in Abuja, which is the uh, political capital of uh, Nigeria, and um, the first attack, over 75 people were killed. The second attack, uh, which took place um, about a week and a half ago, fewer people were killed, but it was in the same uh, vicinity as the first uh, bombing attack. And this came right on the eve of what's going on in Nigeria now, which is the World Economic Forum for Africa, uh, which is taking place right now. So you have all these um, uh, world leaders, uh, bankers, uh, business people that are in Nigeria now for this conference. Uh, right. So, you know, it raises a lot of questions, and um, we get more and more information every day about what's going on. But apparently, the government uh, is extremely weak uh, for various reasons, and uh, maybe we can explore that, um, you know, for the rest of the uh, time that we have this evening. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, look, if you have a question or comment, give us a call. Area code 914 338 1375. 914 338 1375. Press the number one key to put you in queue so we can bring you on the air. I know Rose called earlier and she had a question, so give us a call back, Rose. Um, we're going to get to that question in just a minute here because that's one of the ones that I uh, was asking, you know, why couldn't they protect these girls? But, um, Give us a give us an overview of what happened with this abduction because this happened almost a month ago, but it took about at least two weeks uh, or a little longer for mainstream media to actually start talking about this story. It was the African American media uh, that was talking about it first, and probably African media also. But um, I found out about it from NewsOne.com and TheGrio.com. It wasn't CNN and ABC that I first found out about the story. So give us an overview. What actually happened? Well, this is quite interesting because uh, from the uh, day it happened uh, within the uh, Nigerian media and um, even uh, the uh, British Broadcasting Corporation, which has a um, world service television network that people can even watch here in Detroit, um, that's 24 hours, seven days a week, they have been discussing it. But as you said, in the typical newspaper or news report in the United States just surfaced uh, several days ago, which is very interesting, right on the eve of this World Economic Forum Summit. Now, part of that has to do with the fact that um, the parents uh, of these uh, uh, high school girls and uh, other women and women's groups in Nigeria started to go out and protest uh, in various okay. parts of the country, uh, saying that the government was not doing enough or even, even nothing uh, to uh, rescue these girls. Uh, initially, right. Uh, right after the incident occurred uh, in uh, the middle of April, uh, the military had announced that most of the girls uh, had uh, escaped or had been rescued uh, and that there were only a few remaining in custody. Well, this turned out to be totally false. A few of them right. did escape, but uh, mm -hmm. 
initially they said it was 160 or 70, 70 plus. Now they're saying it's way up to uh, 270, 280 girls that are, right. that are missing. And then there were some other right. girls that right. were also kidnapped uh, just two days ago. So this, this uh, is not, not a new development, what's going on here. And plus, uh, Boko Haram has been carrying out attacks on schools, uh, even at a college um, a dormitory several months ago. They uh, uh, assassinated uh, a number of students. So their objective is to terrorize the population uh, in uh, Nigeria, particularly around the educational institutions. And uh, also, uh, they have been more concentrated on uh, impacting the uh, government, the federal government in Nigeria. Uh, as well as economic, uh, some economic uh, installations as well. So w what's important to understand is that, um, or even to raise questions, who's really behind Boko Haram? Uh, what is propelling them uh, to carry out these attacks at this time? And then we have to look at the response of the Nigerian government. Now, uh, and also the role of the United States in these other uh, European countries. Now, Nigeria was colonized by Britain. Uh, and uh, they have had internal problems since their independence in 1960. Uh, 1966, they had two uh, coup d'etats. Uh, in early 1967, uh, a uh, civil war was started there, uh, and it was started in the north, uh, where you had uh, people who were um, massacring uh, members of the Igbo ethnic group, and uh, mm -hmm. a movement rose among the Igbos. Uh, the Biafra movement, and uh, they tried to set up a separate state in Nigeria uh, in 1967, and they were seeking uh, international recognition. Um, and the war uh, came up around that because the uh, federal government in Nigeria, which was under military rule at the time, opposed uh, this succession. And eventually, um, it took about three years, but the Biafran uh, rebellion was crushed. But it, but it, but when it was crushed. Uh, there didn't appear at the time to be any large-scale desire or intervention of Britain or the United States military forces or NATO. Uh, they were able to deal with their own internal problems. I mean, it, it was dealt with ruthlessly. A lot of people died, uh, but it did not uh, warrant uh, massive uh, foreign intervention. Now, all of a sudden, it appears from the statement made by uh, President Goodluck Johnson today in, in, in Abuja at the World Economic Forum for Africa, that he's welcoming the intervention of the United States, of Britain. Uh, he mentioned China as well. Uh, so it's like he's opening up the country uh, to right. outside interests to, to, to resolve what is essentially an internal security problem. Uh, and then we don't know who's behind, really behind Boko Haram. And it's interesting, too, that Nigeria had just been designated, you know, in the last uh, week and a half ago as having the largest economy in Africa. Uh, it was South Africa that was considered to be the largest economy. Now, all of a sudden, it's Nigeria, okay? So uh, we have to raise questions about that, too, because if they have a large so, economy... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, who determined that Nigeria has the largest economy in Africa? Well, this is a big question. You know, Western uh, financial institutions and analysts uh, made, made this determination. You see, and th this is why we need to analyze it and scrutinize it. And why is it taking place now at the same time they're having one of the worst security crises in the history of the country? You see, and uh, who's behind Boko Haram? Uh, apparently they're well armed, they're well financed, and they, have, they you know, and they're able, they, they're sophisticated enough to produce, transport, and detonate, you know, these deadly explosives. Uh, so, and, and where's the Nigerian military in the north of the country? They have a state right. of emergency in three of the states, even the state, uh, Borno State, where these young girls were kidnapped. It's been under a state of emergency. Yet they claim uh, they really don't have a clue, at least publicly, maybe they do, where these young girls are being held. Uh, they're claiming they're being held in this uh, area called the Zimbizi Forest, which is a vast area. But it's not clear what operations that the Nigerian military has at present uh, in, in the forest there. 
So it's a lot of unanswered questions. But I, I'm just saying that it looks very suspicious that all of a sudden now, Nigeria, which is Africa's largest producer of uh, oil, which which uh, is the largest, uh, the United States imports more oil from from Africa, uh, from Nigeria than any other country on the continent. Nigeria is the number one oil exporter into the United States, and um, at the same time, they're being designated as the largest economy in the world. And then all of a sudden, uh, there's this security situation which necessitates the intervention of the United States. So you know, just raises a lot of questions uh, about you know, this whole scenario, um, and we know, and I've talked about on this program many times, the growing role of the United States Africa Command, uh, NATO, yeah, Africa. Uh, European yeah. Union, yes, and European Union forces, uh, all um, doing naval maneuvers, uh, engaging in joint uh, ground uh, maneuvers and operations, uh, training African military forces. So th they are poised for even a further military intervention in Africa, right at the time that you have all this economic growth on the continent and investment on the continent. So we need to look at this critically. We shouldn't just say, oh, it's terrible that these girls have been uh, kidnapped. I agree 100%. But right. what this can easily lead to, you know, is a deeper uh, U.S. intervention uh, in Nigeria, which is the most populous country in Africa and which has been deemed as the largest economy and which exports more oil than any other country in Africa. So, you know, I don't trust the motives of the United States, and uh, right. I think uh, they could be playing both sides against the middle. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, you, you have to look at AFRICOM with this. And, um, you know, one of the things that really helped to push this story into mainstream media with is the hashtag bring our girls back yeah. okay uh, on the view I think it was either I think it was Monday or Tuesday I think it was Monday the TV show the view that the people watch all across the, the US Barbara yeah. Walters and Jenny mm -hmm. McCarthy and Sherry Shepard and um, Whoopi Goldberg uh, they were talking about this story and they were talking about the hashtag and they used this hashtag things like this now there's a article from uh, it's from a blog, but it's written by um, Jamoke, J U M O K E, who is a yeah, Nigerian American. Yeah, Nigerian name. Yeah, yeah, it's a Europe name. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, and um, uh, the name of this article is "Dear Americans, Your Hashtags Won't Bring Our Girls Back, Bring Back Our Girls. You Might Actually Be Making Things Worse." And what this article is asserting is that by using that hashtag and it becomes so popular that it is almost like giving license to the U.S. to go into Nigeria, which can further expand AFRICOM, which is Africa Command, which is the attempt, uh, the plan of, uh, of uh, the U.S. to take control of the uh, natural resources of all the African countries with the exception of Egypt, from my understanding of this. And People, all you have to do is go to AFRICOM.mil. .mil, M-I-L, is a military extension. That is, this is a military, a U.S. military website. So this is not conspiracy theory. No. It's verifiable. Uh -huh. yeah, a you lot of the stuff they're doing. Website. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, I was just saying, you're right. A lot of the stuff they're doing, they report on it on their website. And uh, all Absolutely. these maneuvers I've been talking about, uh, the joint training operations, the uh, supply of military equipment uh, to these African states, uh, these war games, uh, they're war games, uh, you know, where they uh, simulate a possible U.S. Mm -hmm. invasion uh, into an African right. state to, uh, you know, uh, destroy some terrorists who seized a uh, oil field or refinery or a gold mine, you know, things of this nature. So mm -hmm. you know, this is why people really need to be, critical when they look at this stuff, all of a sudden now, the entire imperialist world is so concerned about uh, some African uh, schoolgirls. You, right, right. um, you know, I mean, we all want to see the girls return. We all want to see peace in Nigeria. But we just have to, you know, be careful because we've seen this kind of scenario before uh, in other countries right. where they create a, a, a conflict. Uh, then they say, well, we got to intervene here. This is a matter of principle, 
but it, when it, but when the, everything is said and done, it turns out there's a whole different agenda involved. Absolutely, uh, it had nothing Absolutely. to do with the schoolgirls or, or bringing peace and security to uh, northern Nigeria. Absolutely. We're going to go to the phone lines in just a minute. Give us a call, 914-338-1375, 914-338-1375. Press the number one key to put you in queue so we can bring you on the air. Um, now, do you think, I'm sure you've seen the hashtag, Bring Back Our Girls. Uh, I've seen, I saw a picture yesterday of uh, First Lady Michelle Obama holding up a sign. Uh, with the hashtag bring back our girls, things like this. Do, 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 do you think um, using this on social media can be a negative thing, or should we use hashtag bring back our girls and the, the, the uh, follow-up hashtag that I created, uh, USA hands off Nigeria? Okay, so <laughs> that's, to me, that's, that's, I think that's appropriate. You know, because anytime you have uh, the first lady, uh, taking this up, you know, yeah. uh, you know, it should send an alarm bell to people. When you got young uh, African American girls here in the in the states uh, whose families are being evicted, uh, whose parents are being laid off, whose schools are being closed, uh, whose communities are being terrorized, and we don't hear anything uh, from the White House. So uh, you know, it just raises you know a lot of questions about what they're doing, but. In terms of the uh, Boko Haram issue, uh, you know, I've been writing articles on this for the last uh, five years when they had the first uh, major clash in, uh, I believe it was July or August of 2009, and this war has been escalating since then. Um, but let me just say this, too, that um, there has been speculation and there's been many charges that there are elements within the Nigerian military based in the north were actually secretly supporting Boko Haram, funding them and facilitating their operations as a means of discrediting uh, the government of President uh, Goodluck Jonathan. Now, Goodluck Jonathan is from the south of Nigeria, uh, which is the oil-rich okay, right. uh, region of the country. And uh, there are a lot of people, northern politicians, and people within the military who don't like him, okay, and uh, want him out. And so... Uh, this is a, a way of discrediting his government. And that's why people are saying, well, what is the Nigerian military doing? Actually, I mean, they have um, you know, tens of thousands of, of, of people in, in uniform, and they have weapons. Uh, they're, they're going through joint training exercises with the United States. Uh, they have oil money. Uh, why can't they uh, tackle Boko Haram? Uh, why haven't they not been able to get to the command center of Boko Haram they claim that they're operating in the Zambezi forest. Uh, why haven't they uh, conducted special commando operations in the force? So it raises a lot of questions in terms of the real commitment of the Nigerian military uh, to deal with this problem at its root. I mean, they've sent soldiers there. There's a state of emergency there. But a lot of the activities they've been carrying out have victimized uh, civilians, uh, you know, people who have been caught up in the crossfire, who have been uh, killed uh, by mistake or through methods of aimed at intimidating the population in northern Nigeria. So if this is true, uh, and many Nigerians believe this, you know, I've talked to some well-informed people uh, who follow politics there, and they, they, they say they are almost certain that there are people within the northern political and, and military establishment that, that are supporting Boko Haram. Now, in 2009, when the first clashes took place, there was, some, uh, uh, there was one person uh, who came out and made a statement that, yes, there were people, uh, very prominent people in the north, who were supporting them. And uh, then, they, then they acted as if they, they weren't supporting them. Uh, so it's a very complex situation. Now, if, if, if they made an alliance, Boko Haram, if they made an alliance with al-Qaeda, that means that they're, they're, they're connected with the Gulf states, the monarchies, you know, in places like uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, the United Arab Emirates and uh, Bahrain and Qatar, and um, that means they have access to a lot of money. They would have access to training and those explosives that they're using, which are essentially the hallmark of the type of operations that al-Qaeda carries out. 
you know, in, in different parts of the world where they function. Right. So, uh, like in Syria, for example, you know, like they blew up this uh, hotel earlier today in Aleppo, you know, in Sy- the largest city in Syria, um, where there had been a fighting going on, you know, for the last three years. Um, you know, they, they, they have the capacity, you know, to engage in these high explosive military operations. So if, if that's the case, uh, and then, of course, we know that uh, the United States really founded al-Qaeda. They don't, they don't, they don't say it now, but in, right. in 1979 and the early 80s, when they were uh, angry because the Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union, uh, went into Afghanistan uh, to stop the uh, attempt to overthrow the socialist government in Afghanistan, they set up al-Qaeda. This is the United right. States. The CIA set them up, you know. And then later they supposedly turned against the United States. But they still used them. They used them in Libya uh, during 2011. Uh, they used them in Syria. And, uh, you know, they're probably using, they could be using them in Nigeria as well. Uh, so right. these people are totally unprincipled. Uh, they have one agenda, and that's right. world domination. And um, I think the lives of people are secondary. Uh, and uh, countries like Nigeria and other African countries that have tremendous resources, uh, oil, natural gas, gold, uh, platinum, uranium, uh, you know, it's just unbelievable the resources that exist in Africa. And the imperialists want to maintain those resources. So uh, they can Absolutely. do it through the military might. They don't have the economic might because China is coming up right behind them. Uh, but they think because they have the military might, uh, that they can uh, dominate these countries, uh, even if it means killing, uh, you know, large sections of their population. Absolutely. Okay, let's go to the phone lines quickly here. Uh, um, let's go to the 267. Uh, call in the 267. Tell us your name. Where are you calling from? Uh, yes, is that me? Yes, that's you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, when I called, I had asked the question, but, I mean, he, he actually gave the answer. I said, how would the U.S. benefit from um, giving um, support, and what would it cost the Nigerians to receive the support? And when he talks about the oil, I mean, there, there's the answer there. I mean, when you think about the situation that went on in Rwanda, and uh, Clinton, then president, got on the TV he said, the United States don't have friends, we just have interests. So if that's what's going on, it's <clears> their <throat> interests that they're protecting, and the girls, they're just putting them up as, a, you know, poster children. That's my comment right. or question. Okay. Okay, thanks, sister. Thanks for calling in. Do uh, you want to comment on that, uh, Abby Omi? Yeah, that's, that's a very good observation. And, um, you know, we have to watch this very carefully um, because uh, it's a hard wrenching situation. You have uh, burgeoning uh, anger in Nigeria itself uh, from uh, women in particular, because this could happen to anybody's child. Uh, and right. uh, the government seems to be incapable of doing anything. They're trying to cover up the problems associated with their own internal weaknesses as it relates to their security apparatus. And then they're turning uh, to the United States uh, asking them for help. So the CIA, the FBI, and the Pentagon are all flying in there. Uh, and these people have never been our friends, uh, period, you know, and uh, they got their own agenda. And uh, that's, that's now, my concern about what's going right. on now. You said these people have never been our friends. Which people are you referring to? I mean, I'm talking about the Pentagon, the Central Intelligence Agency, the FBI. Oh, yeah. They've always oh, been yeah. used okay. against the black mm-hmm. movement. Uh, ever since their inception. I mean, you know, look at Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, yeah. uh, Fred Hampton, the Black Panther Party, uh, Marcus Garvey, you know, they, they, they've been uh, the enemies of, right. Uh, right. you know, of the black struggle, uh, black uh, self-determination and independence from all strands, you know, from the Marcus Garveys all the way to the um, Black Wall Streets, uh, you know, to mm-hmm. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, uh, any black person or black movement anywhere in the world that has the potential of galvanizing African and African people is, is going to be targeted. And uh, they have all kinds of means of doing it. Right, right. 
Um, okay, let's go to the 630 area code. Call on the 630 uh, area code. Tell us your name, where you're calling from. Hold on for a second. Um, just a second here. Okay, call on the 630 area code. Do you have a question or comment or just listening to the show? Call on the 630 area code. Do you have a question or comment or just listening? Raiding the villages and killing people. Okay, just, okay, I think they're just listening to the show. Uh, call on the 702 area code. Do you have a question or comment or just listening? Oh, I'm just listening. I'm sorry about that. I just keep me in for some reason. Okay. No problem. Just keep keep listening. Let's go back to the 60 old very quickly. Call on the 630 area code. Okay. They're, they're just, uh, looks like they're just listening. Okay. Now, um, Abiyomi, what can African Americans do to help uh, bring back uh, these girls? To, uh, what, what, what should we be doing? Well, like you did today, you said you started an alternative hashtag. I mean, within that spirit, that's what people should do. Okay, we want these young girls return uh, to their families, to their school. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we do not want uh, the United States government and Britain and the others to uh, engage in military and intelligence operations there that we know are not going to be in the best interest of the people. Yeah, those are things we could do, and we need to clarify in any mechanism or any platform that we have that uh, we're opposed, you know, to this type of violence against uh, young girls. And uh, but we know uh, that, uh, like, you know, in Afghanistan, they claim they went, they went, they were there, there, and they went there to help Afghan women and Afghan girls. And uh, the, the fact of the matter is, they killed more Afghan women and more Afghan girls. Uh, than uh, any anybody else there, you know, through their own reckless military operations. Uh, so it's the same thing. Uh, they can say, yeah, we're out to save uh, whoever, uh, but uh, they really have their own agenda. When they went to war with Libya three years ago, they were saying they went there to protect civilians, and uh, they wound up killing 100,000 people and dislocating 2 million and stealing $168 billion in foreign assets from Libya, and Libya is in total chaos now. They don't have a government, and the U.S. is there. Uh, you know, they're sending the Marines there now. The CIA has major operations there. So this is their real agenda, and Libya was the um, most prosperous country on the continent uh, when Qaddafi right. was in power. You know, they, right. they had exactly. they virtually owed no money to the IMF and the World Bank. Uh, they had $168 billion in foreign reserves. Uh, you know, everybody there had a high standard of living, and they were assisting other African countries, uh, you know, even people out here, you know, like the uh, Nation of Islam mm -hmm. and others. Uh, they had helped, you know, over the years. So, right. um, you know, and now they claim, you know, Libya is in total chaos. It is. But they, they say Gaddafi was such a horrible guy. So what, what, what I'm saying is is that, uh, you know, we just have to be cautious when we listen to all this stuff uh, and try to figure out uh, how we can counter uh, the war threats and to encourage uh, these African states uh, to, in fact, um, try to deal with their own internal security based on their own interests. And uh, it right, appears right. as if the more the United States gets involved, the worse the security situation becomes in Africa. You know, that's the contradiction, you know. Absolutely. Uh, like in Mali. You know, Mali, they had, they've had they uh, had internal problems in Mali before, but uh, all of a sudden, um, when the U.S. came in to train their troops, they, they can't, they, they have a coup, and then they can't um, deal with uh, problems they have in the north of the country. So the French have to come in and invade and occupy the country, the former colonial power that's supported by the U.S. So this is what we want to avoid, too, in Nigeria, because we know it's not going to, in the long term, it's not going to benefit the, um, the Nigerian people at all. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, look, how can people read uh, your articles on the Pan-African Newswire? 
Okay, you can go to our um, website. It's at panafricannews.blogspot.com, panafricannews.blogspot.com, or, or you can uh, reach um, me on Facebook at uh, Abayomi Azikwe, Abayomi Azikwe, my name uh, on Facebook, and I'm also on Twitter as well. So, uh, yeah, th those are ways you can reach me, and, um, you know, okay. we also do a um, – a radio program called the Pan-African Journal. It's a blog talk radio program every Saturday and Sunday. And that website is blog talk radio forward slash Pan-African Journal. Blogtalkradio.com forward slash Pan-African Journal. That's it. What time does it air? What time does it come on? What time does it Okay, come it comes on? on on Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. and on Sunday from 10 a.m. to noon. Okay, and but you can Eastern find out about time. it at uh, yeah, yeah. You can find out about it by uh, going to the Pan African Journal uh, website or Blog Talk Radio. Okay, let me ask you this question here, and we can wrap it up here. Um, Go ahead. Uh, you know, the Griot doc, the Griot dot com had an excellent article entitled "Nigerian Girl Describes Kidnapping Among Fifty Who Escape," and in this article, they talk about how. Um, Many of the schools, uh, well, first of all, this school was in North Nigeria, okay, which is uh, heavily Muslim populated. Right. And South Nigeria is heavily Christian populated. So this school mm -hmm. had Muslim and Christian schoolgirls in it, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This school had been closed down like many of the other schools have been closed down because of terrorist attacks and things like this. It was mm -hmm. reopened so, so they can take, you know, like their final exams or something like right. that. With, with them, with the authorities knowing the climate that is going on and that you have Christian, at least half of these girls in the school were Christians and the fighting that's going on between the Muslims and Christians, why wasn't there more security measures, uh, why weren't there more security measures taken to protect these girls in this hostile environment? Yeah, it makes no sense, uh, particularly with the state being under a state of emergency. Uh, it would seem like those would be the areas uh, that would be uh, heavily secured. And uh, these are the questions that uh, these women in Nigeria are raising, you know, about the police and the military. Uh, you know that they are. It's hard to believe that they could be that incompetent, intentionally. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because they're a big country. Uh, they're the most populous country in Africa. They have over 120 million people. Uh, one of the largest military forces in Africa. Uh, that's uh, uh, that state is one of the uh, three that are under state of emergency uh, in the north, and yet uh, these crimes are still being committed. Uh, it raises a lot of questions. Absolutely, if he doesn't absolutely. Have, if President Johnson doesn't have total control over the military uh, and that uh, they're allowing things to happen uh, to make him look bad, to discredit him, and essentially try to drive him out of office, uh, if that's the objective, mm -hmm. then they're doing, they're doing a very good job of it. Right, right, exactly. All right, well, look, it's yeah. always good having you on. Thanks for coming on, brother. We've got to bring you back on uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks, man, to give us an uh, uh, update on uh, w uh, other things going on in Africa as well and the U.S. also. All right? Yes, this story, this story is by no means over. It's going to continue Absolutely. for some time to come. Yes. Okay, Absolutely. well, thank you so much okay. for having us on. No problem, brother. Take care. Have a good night. Yes. Okay. All right, family, that was Abiyomi Ezekwe, editor of the Pan-African News Wire. A um, couple of announcements here, because uh, we, you know, we have so many guests here. I uh, didn't get a chance to get to this. I uh, need to get to it before I forget. Um, coming up, let's see, coming up Saturday, May 17th, the Natural, Naturally Fly Detroit presents, once again, the International, Nat International Natural Hair Meetup Date presented by Coils by Nature. This is taking place at the Artist Village, 17340 Lawson Road in Detroit. The Artist Village, 17340 Lawson Road in Detroit. Tickets are $10 in advance. Um, go to uh, eventbrite.com and uh, search for Naturally Fly Detroit, and that's fly with two Ys. We have this post on our Facebook fan page. It's in our email newsletter also that we sent out today. We're going to get this on our website. 
um, tomorrow. I'll be there as well. The African History Network will be there, so be sure to stop by our vendor table. Um, also coming up June 8th, Sunday, June 8th, in uh, this is in uh, Dearborn, Michigan. The uh, Head Wrap Expo is taking place. Beautiful. Beautifully Wrap presents the 2014 Head Wrap Expo. Uh, they're going to have all types of vendors, workshops, all different types of uh, history dealing with the, the head wraps from different uh, parts of the world. Uh, there will be vendors there as well. Uh, so for more information, visit headwrapexpo.com, headwrapexpo.com. And uh, this is taking place Sunday, 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Ford Community and Performing Arts Center located at 15801 Michigan Avenue in Dearborn, Michigan, 15801 Dearborn Avenue, uh, in, uh, 15801 Michigan Avenue, Dearborn, Michigan. Okay. Um, we'll be there as well, the African History Network, so be sure to visit, visit our vendor table. And um, what was uh, something else? Um, see here. I think I had something else to announce. Um, we talked about the male responsibility. Um, oh, you know, Renoko Rashidi gave me some information here. Uh, you've seen him in Hidden Colors 2. We just posted this on our Facebook fan page. Uh, he has a, um, a, a tour coming up, okay? And it is a tour of, uh, tour of Europe. So we know there's a lot of a lot of history in Europe, also. Okay, and this is the. Um, let me scroll down to it here. This is uh, museums and African heritage in Europe 2014 uh, tour. Okay, with Renoko Rashidi. We have this posted on our Facebook fan page, uh, the African History Network. So check that out when you call the. Uh, travel guide and uh, to, to book this, be sure to let them know that you found out about this uh, on the African History Network. And uh, it's Museums and African Heritage in Europe. Uh, this is taking place August 21st through August 30th. Uh, double occupancy is uh, $3,395. Single occupancy, $3,995. Uh, there's a $200 deposit needed to reserve your space. Uh, you'll be staying in a deluxe hotel. Uh, breakfast and either lunch or dinner included daily. Let's see, they're going to um, um, deal with the C2 orientation and introductory lecture on the African presence in Europe by uh, Renoko Rashidi. They'll uh, visit uh, museums and uh, let's see here. Some of the other highlights, uh, take a cruise on the River Spree for an introduction to Berlin's famous sites and, and varied architecture. Um, you'll be going to Amsterdam also as well in this tour. Um, check this out. Um, check this out here. At, uh, and you also go to... Um, uh, also go to Paris, France, as well with this. Okay, uh, you'll um, check out the burial place of the famous uh, African French writer Alexander Dumas. Um, so there's a lot here in this tour. Check uh, check this out on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, the African History Network. You can also um, call the uh, travel guide uh, for more information. Uh, Betty Ray is her name, 646-308-1232, uh, 646-308-1232. You can also email her at Betty, uh, B-E-T-T-Y, at accessafrica.com, Betty at accessafrica.com. Be sure to let them know you found out about this on the African History Network. All right. Um, once again, we reached our goal for the crowdfunding campaign, so uh, thanks uh, to everybody that donated. You can still donate if you want to, because we'll, we, we'll use the funds to run the African History Network. I just purchased the, the largest piece of equipment, the most expensive piece of equipment I purchased today, 
Okay, hopefully within the next two weeks, our show will start up on uh, start up on the um, Empowerment Radio Network. Uh, so I talked to Dave Anderson, the owner today, and uh, ordered it today um, the uh, Kodak Brick Unit. So, um, if you want to donate, go to our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can also um, uh, go to our uh, Indiegogo page, our crowdfunding page, Indiegogo.com, I-N-D-I-E, Indiegogo.com. If you want to contact me for an interview or if you want to bring me in for a lecture in your area, email me at info at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, I-N-F-O, info at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And also at our, at our website, um, we have a wide selection of DVDs there. And you uh, have all my lectures also, all 17 of my lectures there. So you can check that out. You can get all my lectures also for one low price as well. All right? Okay, that's going to do it for us. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Remember, right now, it's character-grown behavior. My hotel. We'll talk to you next time. Peace. <laughs>